2022 bid at 03 review australian first drive another day another new electric car for the australian market but with the 2022 bid at 03 it's a different story because this isn't just a new ev it's a whole new brand for our market bid stands for build your dreams an interesting anecdote for the massive chinese company that has a history of building batteries and is now building cars and the first bid that will land in Australia is the Addo 3, a medium-sized SUV that measures 4,455 mm long and 1,875 mm wide. It has room for five on board and will come with a starting price of $44,790 before on-road costs. The final price of the Addo 3 will vary according to the state you're going to buy and register the vehicle, but this will be one of the lowest priced electric cars on the Australian market. And it's the first of many, according the bid importers, EvDirect. There is expected to be a hatchback, large SUV, sedan and van, eventually making their way to Australia. The car we have here isn't an Australian delivered right-hand drive model, those will get to the country in the middle of the year. Instead, we've got an evaluation vehicle from BID. It's a Chinese market model, complete with Chinese writing, badges and logos. Plus, it's left-hand drive. But armed with special permission and a trade plate, we've been able to test drive this 2022 BID at 03 on Aussie roads. While options will likely be short, we've got the extended range box ticked on this test car. This takes the claimed driving range of the BID at 03 from 320 km to 420 km, according to WLTP testing. This extended range option, which grows the battery from 50 kWh to 60 kWh, seems to be a good option for those who want the surety of that extra driving range, at $3,000. The MG ZSF will likely hold on to the crown of cheapest electric car in Australia for now, but the Addo 3 brings the advantage of more overall size, as well as some extra power from its electric motor. Other options around the $50,000 mark include the Nissan Leaf, Hyundai's Ioniq and Kona, as well as the Mini Cooper SE. The Tesla Model 3 is a more expensive proposition, as well as newer entrants like the Kia EV6 and Hyundai Ioniq 5. Currently, the Tesla Model 3 is the best-selling electric car in Australia. While the steering wheel of this bid at 03 is on the wrong side for Australia, the basic layout and specifications will remain largely the same. And overall, it's quite a different and impressive interior design. While many recent newcomers have gone with a more derivative base design that mimics and mirrors existing options, I have to applaud this interior for stepping in its own direction. It's probably not to everyone's taste, but you're definitely not going to confuse the interior of an Addo 3 with anything else. Some of the more interesting points to discuss, the door handles, mounted atop a speaker, that surprisingly work well. There are red elastic cords, that play a tune, as well as contain the door card contents. The air vents are an interesting design as well, which I can't remember seeing on another car. Thankfully, the Addo 3 retains a less zany approach to everyday storage. There is room underneath the center console and shifter for a small handbag, and you'll find twin USB points and a 12V power outlet down here as well. There is a wireless charging pad up top and a couple of cup holders behind the shifter. The central storage bin is well-sized, covered with the same leather-like material you'll find on door cards and across the dashboard. The design is quite minimalist, with low-slung air vents tidying up an otherwise empty dash. It's a curved and flowing design overall, in comparison to the angular and trapezoidal elements that seem quite popular these days. An interesting point here, our test car had the charging point for a Karaoke microphone in the center console, something of a standard addition for the Chinese market. Hopefully such a thing comes to Australia, so I can try out Wanted Dead or Alive while crawling through bad Sydney traffic. The other major material here is a foam-like plastic, something like an open-pore neoprene. It's designed to resemble a muscle, bulging with tendons and fibers, and certainly adds to the unique ambience inside the Addo 3. We noted a small amount of dirt transfer on this part of the interior, but it seemed to clean down easily with a damp cloth. In the second row, the size and design of the Addo 3 yields big benefits. 
Firstly, it is big. Considering this car is a little shorter than a Toyota RAV4, the amount of legroom and tow room is impressive. Seats, covered in the same materials as the front, are comfortable, but headroom isn't in the same abundant supply. There was enough headroom for me, but taller adults would likely rub their head against the lid. Blame the sunroof perhaps, which extends all the way back to behind the second row occupants. Because the Atto 3 is a ground-up EV design, the floor in the second row is completely flat. It's a great benefit overall, especially if you're loading three adults into the rear. Other elements worth noting, air vents, twin USB points, map pockets in the seat backs, and the same red elastic rope over the door card storage. Kids will love this, I'm sure. But parents probably won't, and I wonder how well the elastic will hold up to the sustained abuse of plucking fingers. The boot measures in a 434 liters, according to bid. Although, it's currently unclear what method the Chinese brand took to arrive at this number. General observations of mine says it's a decent size, without being massive. In its largest configuration, the floor sits low down above the goo kit. You can shift the floor upwards, almost level with the lip of the boot. In this spot, size is reduced quite dramatically, but those who want to fit in a proper spare wheel, even full-sized, potentially, will have this option. Here's where the party starts, or party tricks at least, to impress your friends. Firstly, the infotainment display is massive at 12.8 inches. Plus, it can rotate between portrait and landscape orientation, depending on user preferences. Life would likely go on without such a feature, but it is pretty cool. This infotainment system doesn't use straight Apple CarPlay or Android Auto connectivity, at least initially, for smartphone mirroring. Instead, it uses a D-Link third-party app for such things. Bid tells us it is looking to implement straight mirroring in the future however, and is hoping to have it sorted out by the end of the year. This could be a simple software update for exiting users as well, without any required hardware changes. The operating system otherwise uses an interface similar to a smartphone, with the ability to connect to the internet and download apps for general usage. There's digital radio listed as a feature for Australian delivered vehicles, along with an impressive 360-degree camera system. This has a wide variety of three-dimensional and viewing positions to choose from, as well as keeping an eye on what's happening underneath the Atto 3. The system also has a built-in DVR recorder, or dashcam, for general usage. For many who want to use such a thing, having an integrated solution already sorted out would be of great benefit. Instead of a traditional instrument binnacle located on the dashboard, the BitAto 3 uses a smaller digital display mounted on the steering column. It works well, with basic readouts like driving range, energy usage and speed readily available. Users can cycle through some additional information as well, like tire pressure monitoring and average energy consumption. Being a new model both in Australia and China, we don't know absolutely everything about the BitAto 3 from a safety perspective. It's yet to be tested by the Australian Crash Safety Authority ANCAP, but there is a fair amount of standard safety equipment listed by EvDirect, the company responsible for importing the bit into Australia. Adaptive cruise control, seven airbags, front collision warning, rear collision warning, lane departure warning, rear cross-traffic alert and rear cross-traffic braking as well as autonomous emergency braking. We noted couple of false alarms on the forward collision warning during our time with the car, driving along narrow streets choked with parked vehicles, but otherwise, these more advanced bits of safety equipment seem unobtrusive. For the full picture on safety, we'll need to wait for the Australian delivered vehicle to properly land. And we'll also need the input of an official crash testing authority, whether that comes from the Australian or more global side of things.